Hey Jackals, today we'll take a look at the Nova Fuse plugin for DaVinci Resolve and some of the effects that you can do quite easily. Now let's get digital. I'll leave a link to this website so you can download it. Simply get it here when you click on this website link. This website will open up and you have to go a little bit down, click on the download button and when you do, this website opens up. You can put in any number that you want. So if you want it for free, put in zero, click on one this. We'll have to put in your name and email. I'm not affiliated to it. There are no effects. I'm just showing you what I've used to make the background in my previous videos. Then once you get the email, simply click on the link. You'll get something like this. Click on the download. And when you do, open up the Minch Resolve. Then what we'll want to do is add a new Fusion composition. Right click, make a new Fusion composition. I already have it. So I'll just put it onto the timeline and go into the Fusion page. Now in the Fusion page, you'll want to take the Nova installer that you have and simply put it in. And it says installing. I already had it installed, so I hope this doesn't mess up my installation. Now when you do the installation, simply close the Winch Resolve and open it up again. Go into the Fusion page. In my case, this is Control Space, select Tools, type in Nova, and you'll have the Nova plugin. You can simply connect it to the media out and this is how it looks like. I have a video on the Nova plugin and all of the settings. So this time I'll just focus on the effects that I've made. So let's go with the simplest one. You have all of the effects at the effects. So the first one that I'll use is zoom. It's under open effects and it's zoom blur. Now with this effect, I went with the idea of entering and exiting the hyperspace. So let's connect it. We have something that looks like a space. So first what we'll want to do is get rid of the line thickness so we don't see any lines. We could leave it like that. Let's see. So we don't want any auto evolution. No changes yet. So I'll change the zoom to 0 0.02. So we'll have some movement and we need to enable the auto zoom. So now we have a feeling that we're traveling forwards. That's good. So now I have to make the jump and then we'll exit the jump. So to do that, I'll go to frame 10. So I'll keyframe the zoom speed. Let's put this back to 0 0.02. And then we'll also adjust the zoom blur. Now I'll first adjust the center exclusion. This kind of makes it feel like we're traveling, but slowly because we have some stars going Past is faster, but these ones are stationary. So maybe 0 0.6 will be the starting value. Something like that. Keyframe this. And then the jump will end, let's say, how fast? 12 frames. This is half a second in my case. So we need to jump in just like that. Goes back down to zero. And we also need to speed up. And let's see what about this option. So we also want to increase this. So 0.8 will be the maximum value and the starting value will be 0.4. So that's okay. But now let's take a look at the zoom speed. So maybe we want to go from 0.2 to maybe 0.5. So let's see what we have. Noise. We could go to the spline and adjust all of the key points that we've added. Maybe smooth them out and then just play around with the settings. Because the engine can jump immediately, we'll have a bit of a spin up. So I'll go for this kind of curve and I'll try to do the same for the zoom. Zoom, zoom. So like that and track this one to here and the bottom one somewhere the same, like so. Cool, now let's jump out. So we can go to the keyframes, select the node that we want. I'll first copy these values, copy value, copy points, paste points, paste points with values and select this one. Base points values. 
So do we get spin down? And we do. We can move this also here so we get a little bit longer ending. And we have to do the same for the speed. So I'll do this manually. Go to here. Click on the speed. And go here and put this back to 0 0.2. So this is one effect, now I'll make a second effect, use a Nova node, this time I'll use radial blur, connect it, this time I'll go with a low speed of 0 0.01, no evolution, and no line thickness, just like that. And what we can also adjust is under the glow, the bloom, maybe something like 0 0.6, but we can adjust this later. Woo! So spinny. No evolution. So auto evolve is off. I'll just use the blurs inside the open effects. So I'll use directional blur. So we have something like that. We can adjust the angle and the blur strength. And lastly, I'll use prism blur. Now if you get spots like this, you'll simply have to adjust the settings and see which ones affect what. In this case the issue is the prism blur, so we have to play around with the settings. So maybe something like this. Now if you don't want the black background, you can go to the Nova Fuse, go to the color and disable the background. And you can also have automatic color animation, so that it changes color over time. It's a little bit too fast for my taste, so what we could do is maybe add the time speed node and slow this down. So maybe 0 0.2. Maybe this is a little bit better, but now the effect is not that visible because I've used the time speed node. So I'll disconnect it. And as you can see, this changes the color now. Instead of the time speed node, to maybe get rid of all of the flickering, we could use, let's say, mosaic blur. This one's kind of useful, maybe. Let's say pixel frequency, anti-aliasing. Not really in this case, but we'll use it in the next example. So in this example, we'll again use the Nova plugin. We'll use the mosaic blur and we'll be using lens blur. I'll disable it for now. And just go with setting up the Nova Fuse, so I'll also go with Auto Zoom, 0 0.01 speed, disable Auto Evolve, and we don't want any lines. In the Mosaic Blur, we'll set the max frequency to maximum and the aliasing to minimum, and under Advanced, we can set the aspect to minimum as well, 0 0.2. Now let's enable the Lens Blur, see what we got. We get a little bit of artifacting, so let's fix that. We'll set the highlights to off. This should help with the artifacting, and it does. And you can use the apodization to punch a hole through the shape. Now what do we get? Something like that. We could maybe speed up the zoom. But first let's adjust the glow and set the bloom to something that's less than one. So now we don't need to fix the speed because we do have an animation that is slow but visible. But what's cool about the lens blur is that you don't need to use the hexagonal shape. You can use one of the other shapes, but you can use the creative shapes. So now you have a heart. So now I have a bunch of hertz floating around. You can use the blur size to increase or decrease them, but you'll probably want to increase them if you want to make them pop out a little bit. And again, you could go to the color, apply the automatic color and make this transparent. Now this doesn't stop here. You can add other effects like maybe light rays 
set the point to the center and then simply adjust the lighting so that it's not as strong or as strong as you want. Maybe adjust the length, soften it up. Maybe something like that, who knows. So this is the third effect and now for the last one that you could also use for a music video by using an audio plugin. So I'll make a Nova plugin and this one will only use one node. Mirrors. You can do a lot with this one. First let's set up the Nova node. So I'll do a 0.3 speed auto zoom, no evolve. I'll first adjust the values here to something that I like, but you can use any values that you want. And let's some automatic color. Now in the mirror node, we'll leave the first one as is. The second one, we'll enable it and flip it by 90 degrees and the third one by minus 45. If you don't like what you get, you can simply switch these two values. So the first one will be minus 90 and the second one will be 45. That looks kind of cool. Let's see how this one looks like. If you want to have the center a little bit more punchier, you can go back to the Nova plugin and adjust the front and back fade. So maybe this is what I got. If you don't want to use this for a music video, that would be used as a background. What you could do is use the bright and close lines and apply that to the audio volume that you use for the music. So let's say that I want to do that. Modify with audio wave. You need the audio wave plugin. Let's see, do I have a file that's on hand quickly? This one maybe. Just like that, quick and easy. I won't be making any changes. Let's see if it works. It does. If I go back to the tools, you'll see that this value keeps changing up and down, up and down. So if you want to have like a techno beat or something like that, you can simply use this. And that concludes this video on the Nova plugin as a background generator in DaVinci Resolve 17. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.